So guys, welcome back to the channel. And like always, hit the like button, hit the subscribe for more content. But I wanna get right into this video. Right now, we're gonna talk about the OnePlus N30 5G and some of the issues that I have with it and kind of give you reasons why to buy it and reasons, and I guess you could say the counter, why not to buy it. Now, this is my personal device that I use every single day. I do have multiple phones, but I normally use the mid-tier phones because I am with Metro by T-Mobile. I like having insurance on my devices and I can never actually in good faith tell you what to buy and what is good without actually using it for long periods of time. So with that being said, just wanna give you that disclaimer. There will be a description in the video to skip to the part that you want. Let's get right into it and not waste any more time. So the first issue, and it's not really a huge issue, but I do have to talk about it. Let me give the phone some grace before I give it a negative. So this is a 120 hertz, 6.7 inch screen. Uh, one of the reasons why I love this particular phone is it's one, it still has the headphone jack, as you can see at the bottom, USB-C. Do apologize, I'm recording on an A20, so the camera quality isn't that great, but this is my throwaway phone that I use. 120 hertz, so you do have a nice sharp screen, uh, very, very minimal lag, if we're being completely honest here. And you're gonna like the experience. Now, granted, this is not an OLED screen. This is not a Super AMOLED. It's just a basic generic LCD. There's nothing special about it whatsoever, so the colors will not pop, but there's nothing wrong with that. Sometimes you just want a phone that works well, and that's pretty much it, because there are other features that make this phone amazing. Now, here's a negative to that aspect. Now, for me, I do a lot of manga reading. And normally everything works perfectly fine. I don't really have any issues whatsoever. But let me kind of explain to you what issue I did have. And this might happen for some of you guys that have a uh, heavier touch. Most people, when they swipe, they're just swiping like this, right? Everything seems perfectly fine. Occasionally, when I'm swiping, sometimes there's this thing what I like to call a phantom touch. Let me just make it up now. Phantom touch is when you're swiping and the phone registers that your finger was on a particular part of the screen for too long, right? And what happens with that is it'll click in while you're still scrolling, thinking that you're reading something. You'll see the top of your screen loading and your finger accidentally tapped into a particular picture. This website doesn't actually do that. But for some other websites like YouTube or, you know, any video that you're watching that has a thumbnail, you'll just keep swiping and it'll occasionally accidentally click into that video, forcing you to watch it, which you'll have to press the back button or the swipe backwards. That's about it. It's nothing serious at all, so don't be alarmed. It's not like you're gonna have all types of missed touches when playing video games and things like that. I haven't experienced that. But for some people, they want a perfect experience, and I do need you to understand that swiping a OLED screen, it's gonna feel a lot sharper than swiping an LCD. But if you're not an anal person, I'm certainly not. It's not a big deal. You're definitely gonna like this phone for what it offers. So another positive is two things. I wanna add, combine them, the battery, and the fact that this still has a headphone jack. So right here, uh, you have the headphone jack, which most phones should have this. If we're being completely honest, there's absolutely no reason for any carrier to take that away except for to get more sales and to try to force you to buy their wireless devices. Um, outside of that, oh, my wife is calling. Let me just uh, mute that for a moment and finish this section. The fast charging on this is 50 watts. Now, I'm currently using a 65 watt fast charger for my OnePlus device, which is, I believe it went to the OnePlus 7T back in the day. I, I held on to that charger, which uses the USB-C. Works perfectly fine. I still get the 50 watt charging out of it. It doesn't go any higher than that, so it doesn't really harm the phone. The only negative, actually, before we do about negatives, 30 minutes to charge this phone will give you about 80%, which is very, very good for you guys that are irresponsible phone chargers, especially in the morning, fall asleep, forget. You can plug it up, make breakfast, take a shower. Within 30 minutes, if you have 20% left or so, 30%, guess what? Your phone's gonna be fully charged before you even walk out the house. Now, the only negative to that is that if we go to the settings right here, and I'm gonna show you in real time so you guys have an idea what I'm talking about. You go to battery, as you can see right here, there's gonna be an option called uh, battery health, and you have the option to use wise charging, battery booster, let me see if more settings let you do it too, sleep standby, optimized battery use, high performance. So when you look at the battery management options, it can charge slower based on your usage. I turn all those features off. So what that means is that your battery is gonna degrade faster. Now for the average person, you're not gonna notice this. You, you'll probably use your phone for a year, 
year and a half and then notice, oh, my phone dies a little bit slower than what it originally does. That's pretty much about it. Now, these phones are extremely cheap. Now, granted, it is $299. If you go into the OnePlus website, they'll give you a free pair of buds. I think that promotion is still going on. But if you're a Metro by T-Mobile user, you already know that you're probably play, paying this for either free or $80 out of the stores. You're getting a discounted deal, so it doesn't hurt you as much. But it is something I just want you guys to kind of be aware of because there may be a turnoff to some people. Me personally, I love the fast charging and there is no phone outside of OnePlus and overseas phones that charge faster than OnePlus devices. So the cameras, guys, mediocre. So no, not mediocre, but it's not the worst camera, but it's certainly not the best. So whenever I use this device, right, um, what I've noticed is that it doesn't overheat like the Pixel or anything like that. The camera is actually pretty good on this device. Now, the one issue, no, two issues. If I'm being completely honest, and again, I'm, I'm talking to you guys as a regular human being that does not do extremely nice looking photography, is that this should have had 60 frames per second under 1080p, but it does not. Uh, the Pixel has six, uh, the Pixel 6a under Metro by T-Mobile, remember I'm only doing Metro devices, has 4K 60 frames up to. The, the A54 5G also has up to 60 frames 4k they also have 60 frames in 1080p for me i think 1080p should honestly be the best thing that this phone has like 1080 60 frames should have been the standard for every single smartphone because 1080p to most people is good enough some people don't mind 4k obviously 4k is amazing but when you upload videos in 4k the amount of conversion and, and, and so much work do you have to do because it's a huge, huge file. With audio and video combined, it is huge. And, but it does make a huge difference in the quality when you actually watch a video. But most people don't have 4K cameras. Most people don't have plans on their cell phones that even support 4K. And normally 1080p 60 frames is what YouTube is set to or what it allows you to go up to normally. So you're not going to notice a huge difference if you're coming from a previous OnePlus device. Your, the camera's on brand to what you're used to dealing with. It is better than an N20, in my opinion. Of course, I haven't had that phone in a while, so, you know, take that with a grain of salt. But I, I do say that this phone overall just offers more than N20, and, and mainly because of the battery life. So if you don't have a reason to upgrade, you have an N20, don't do it. But if you want the bigger screen, you, instead of having 90 hertz, you want 120 hertz. Instead of having a 33 watt charger that does not do warp charging, you want a 50 watt charger there is reasons to actually upgrade it's one of the reasons why i did and i like this phone substantially better than the n20 because for the n20 i had issues with uh paramount plus amongst other things and it just didn't work that well and the reason why i'm just still recording this while holding this uh is because with the pixel and this is the reason why i'm doing this after a couple minutes the pixel gets very very hot in 4k even though the cameras are amazing the phone will shut itself down like the camera aspect and say listen it's too hot we got to let the processor cool down. You can start recording again once it cools down. For me, I don't have time for that nonsense. When I do these types of videos, I don't want my video to stop in the middle of what I'm saying and I completely lose my train of thought or I don't even realize that, hey, it been stopped recording. <laughs> but this records just fine. The phone feels very nice. I do plan on getting one of those little heat guns. So you can see the, the uh, temperature. So I will order that off of Amazon soon. But I don't have any issues. I can walk around with this phone without a case and it doesn't feel like it's going to burn my hand when I use it for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, 50 minutes. When I'm outside in the sun, obviously phones get hot, but not to the point where it feels like it's going to burn me. But I do not suggest you going outside in the middle of the summer, 100 degrees, 120 in Texas, 2000 degrees in uh, Arizona and think that your phone is going to be perfectly fine. It is a piece of machinery. So with that being said, um, if you're perfectly fine with your phone doing 1080p 30 frames, that's not a big deal to you and you're using it more for just everyday use rather than a, uh, a selfie stick, <laughs> then you should be perfectly fine with the camera with this device. But what I will say is if you're used to 4K, I'm going to tell you now, your videos are going to suffer a lot because this does not do 4K. If you're a content creator, I would not suggest this phone if you're used to 4K or what I would suggest is using a separate camera or a separate device that you used to have and use this as your primary so that way you have a, a camera that can be used alone as a standalone device itself and you use it strictly for camera work. But anyway, I'm rambling and I'm losing myself a little bit. I'm very, very tired, but I wanted to get this video out here. Anyway, let's talk about the last section. 
So productivity. Now, this is a section that I added recently in a lot of my videos because some people don't quite know what that is. So don't be insulted. It's nothing wrong with that. Again, most people use their phone for basic stuff like email, the Play Store that you see right here, basic internet access and whatnot. Um, the phone is going to run a tad bit slow because I am currently, uh, I'm in an area with not decent service. So that's why the internet runs a little bit slow, but the phone normally runs very well. The network signal is normally pretty strong on this device. Unlike the Pixel, this phone actually has a very good network strength. Excuse me, everywhere I go throughout the city. So please do be aware of that. Pixels tend to have terrible network signals since they started doing the six models, the 6A, the 7, the 7A. Well, I don't know about the 7A, but definitely the 7 because I played around with one of those. But still a good phone in its own right. But productivity, let me give you an example. I used to use an application called UCut. And that normally, let me show you what the app looks like. UCut. Where are we? UCut. Here we are. And what this application does, right, it allows you to basically uh, cut up certain parts of your videos, add multiple videos together, add music to it to make a full coherent story. It's, a lot of people use this, obviously. Now, this phone kept freezing. Not because it can't handle anything, because it does have uh, 8 gigs of RAM inside the device. And, you know, check my, out my other review if you want to hear more about stuff. But this is just a quick, should you, should you or should you not buy some issues. Ucut kept freezing with the N35G. So anyone that has experienced this, I really hope that you can find this video. Because I had the issue where every time I tried to convert something, occasionally it would work. But 90% of the time, we're talking I can make my phone freeze six times in a row because of how bad you cut uh responded to this phone it kept freezing i was almost ready to completely switch over to the a54 5g again because i had a uh, subscription for you cut like uh, i think it's like 4.99 a year or like 12 dollars or something to own it permanently and i canceled that and it ended up using an application called i believe it's called n shot right here and this guy right here uh let's say i do a video let's give you guys an example this video right here it's playing. You can't hear the music because I have my headset on, so it's playing in my headset. But as you can see, it allows me to combine other videos. And it shows you the transition to when it switches and whatnot. And this video is actually about... I forget what this video is actually about. It's been a while. It was, it's an Officer Tatum video. But the point is that I was able to add music, as you can see right here, throughout the entire thing. It's a full editing application. Now, Apple has their own editing application that you download for free. I don't really like it that much because of how much it zooms into the picture while these keep the video in its original quality. So works very well for me. I can do everything in the background whenever I edit applications. I don't have that freezing issue. What I will say, and there's a negative aspect of it, that the phone will get warm. Now, from the time of me doing this section, I was just playing Call of Duty and the phone did get a little bit warm nothing to be afraid of it hasn't overheated i haven't had any issues that said it's going to explode or turn into a fireball or anything like that i did not have any overheating issues with this phone whatsoever especially when it came to the charging so when it comes to everyday use the phone is wonderful in my opinion i, I it, it does not outdo the a54 5g it does not outdo the uh pixel 6a for metro by t-mobile but if you're buying a one plus device you're buying it mainly for the charger you're buying it for the charging speed. You're buying it for the screen size. You're buying it for multiple reasons outside of just things like camera, though cameras are very important. But again, it's all about the lifestyle and what you choose to use it for. So for pro productivity, swiping, going through applications, uploading YouTube videos, things like that, that's what I consider productivity. It works perfectly fine. I haven't had any overheating issues. It, it hasn't slowed down my phone. The eight gigs of RAM in this device does very, very well. And yes, you heard correctly, it has eight gigs of RAM. So let's go on to the last section, which is going to be, well, I guess second to last section because I talk about the cameras. And that's where it, this is probably going to either sell or or stop people from buying the device. So to answer your question is, is this phone actually worth it? Yes, it is. Now, again, I didn't pay regular price. I paid the add alone. I paid the add on add a line price under Metro, which was eighty nine dollars for the phone. I paid like 60 something for the plan taxes and fees it was about 140 dollars 150 i forget the amount roughly maybe a little bit more than that or a little bit less i forget it was around that range um what was it, 90 dollars plus 60 yeah it was about that range because i believe they didn't charge me an activation fee sometimes metro does sometimes they have deals where they don't if you're porting from a different carrier 
let's say Cricket, AT&T, you're going to be able to get the phone for absolutely free. Now, there are going to be other option phones that are also free, like the iPhone 11. Some people still want that. 64 gigs to me is laughable. I can't do anything with that. But some people just want the Apple experience. That's perfectly fine. Um, the A54 5G and the Pixel are also available. But I already sold those phones. I don't have them anymore. And to be honest with you, uh, if it wasn't for the fast charging with this device and the headphone jack, I would have definitely used one of those other phones. But when you can charge your phone in like 45 minutes or so, that makes a huge difference. When you can plug up your phone, use it, and it's still fast charging in front of you, that means that essentially if you do everything for your phone, remember I do edits from the computer too. I have multiple channels, but a lot of my edits come from the phone. I can edit, charge the phone at the same time. It doesn't overheat for me at least. Um, post the videos i don't have any issues the 5g is very stable the 4g is also very fast if you want to conserve battery and not use 5g because previous models of the one plus is just my opinion i noticed that the n20 had an issue with 5g where i had to actually take it off of 5g and keep it on um 4g with certain devices like the n300 i believe it was too where the internet just wasn't as responsive where it was still fast but you could definitely tell that the 5G coverage was spotty. And remember, I'm always in the same locations. So when I came up with this phone, I was a little skeptical, but it works great. The camera works fine. The audio works fine. The phone isn't overheating. It's not freezing. I'm not having any issues. The screen didn't give me any problems. Well, what I will say is that, like I said, you'll see occasional slowdown when you look at applications like this. Occasional lag here and there, but not enough where you'll say, oh my gosh, I can't use this phone. Oh, it's terrible. I should have got something else. I think you'll like it. Now, again, if you're a camera buff, go get yourself a Pixel or preferably an A54 5G. Even though the Pixel blows both of these phones combined out of the water in terms of uh, what it can do with the processor, it has issues with overheating. And to be honest with you, that's a deal breaker for a lot of people. It certainly was for me, so it might be for you. But anyway, that's all I have to say. Um, don't want to make this video longer than it needs to be. But if anybody wants to request and want me to do some tests with this, hey, by all means, go in the comment section, let me know, and I'll make a video. Anyway, like and subscribe like always, and I will see you guys in the next video.